Some clinical trials have suggested that omega-3 fatty acids may be associated with an increased risk for atrial fibrillation, the most common heart rhythm disorder. People with the disorder have five times greater likelihood of having a stroke. A meta-analysis took place in 2021 that assessed the outcomes of several clinical trials and concluded that omega-3 supplementation, particularly above one gram per day, increased the risk of developing atrial fibrillation. Given this conflicts with everything we've been led to believe about omega-3s over the years, including numerous cardiovascular and neurological benefits, this evidence comes as quite a shock to most people. I've even read some articles following this up with claims that the well-known cardiovascular benefits of omega-3 supplementation are not backed with clinical evidence. This part is simply untrue. While it's challenging to provide an exact count, I can assure you that there's a substantial body of research on this topic. Cardiovascular benefits include cardiovascular disease prevention. Multiple studies have shown that omega-3 fatty acids have a protective effect against cardiovascular diseases, including coronary heart disease, heart attacks, and strokes. These studies include large randomized control trials, such as the GISSI Prevenzione trial and the Reduce It trial. Triglyceride reduction is another benefit. Omega-3 fatty acids have been shown to reduce triglyceride levels, which are associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. This effect has been demonstrated in several studies, including, again, the GISSI Prevenzione trial and the JELIS trial, J-E-L-I-S trial. Blood pressure management is another benefit. Some research suggests that omega-3 supplementation may have a modest effect in reducing blood pressure levels, particularly in individuals with hypertension. Anti-inflammatory effects is another benefit of omega-3 fatty acids. They possess anti-inflammatory properties so can contribute to cardiovascular benefits. Chronic inflammation plays a role in the development of atherosclerosis and other cardiovascular conditions. Neurological benefits of omega-3s include cognitive function and aging. So several studies have examined the potential cognitive benefits of omega-3 fatty acids, particularly in older adults. While results have been mixed, some studies suggest that omega-3 supplementation may have a positive effect on cognitive function and help protect against cognitive decline. Omega-3 fatty acids have also been said to help with mental health conditions. They've been investigated for their potential therapeutic effects in this regard such as treating anxiety, depression, and bipolar disorder. So this new evidence really is quite contradictory to everything we once knew about omega-3 fatty acids. Suddenly, we're now seeing that it's detrimental to cardiovascular health and not beneficial. Now, it's important we dig into the claims of this new study a little further to understand the real risk factors. Let's begin with the meta-analysis itself, so we can see if we should be lending any credibility to these claims in the first instance. The analysis covered five randomized controlled trials investigating the effects of omega-3 fatty acid supplementation on cardiovascular outcomes. Participants of these five trials had elevated triglycerides and were at either high risk of cardiovascular disease or had established cardiovascular disease already. This is the most poignant piece of information when it comes to assessing the credibility of the study and its findings. All people across these five trials had either pre-existing cardiovascular issues or were at least at higher risk of experiencing cardiovascular issues. This likely skews the whole outcome when it comes to making generalized conclusions like omega-3 can increase the risk of atrial fibrillation. Not correct, at least not for the general population and particularly not for those who are of good or reasonable health. The people in these studies were likely to have been at higher risk of experiencing atrial fibrillation anyway due to their pre-existing cardiovascular issues or higher cardiovascular risk factors. So it could be argued that in fact, the doses of omega-3 may not have been high enough to combat their pre-existing conditions or risk, or that their other lifestyle choices or genetic predispositions meant that they would have incurred atrial fibrillation anyway, omega-3 th omega supplementation or not. A total of 50,277 patients received fish oils or placebo and were followed, followed up for between two to 7.4 years. So granted, this was a fairly large scale long-term analysis. And the dose of fish oils varied from 0.84 grams to four grams per day. So fairly significant doses. I personally have a very high strength fish oil supplement, one of the most potent you can buy. And this delivers around 3.5 grams of total omega-3s daily. Anything above one to two grams could be considered pretty high dose. 
So in summary, a pretty credible study insofar as scale, dosages and duration, but heavily skewed by the specific health condition and risk factors of the sample group. Bear this in mind, and I really don't think as a result that they should be concluding a sweeping statement of omega-3s increase your risk of atrial fibrillation from this study, not without making the context of the study sample very clear, which most media coverage didn't do. You have to dig into the meta-analysis overview and the papers themselves to decipher this critical piece of information. Now, even if indeed omega-3 supplementation led to increased risk of atrial fibrillation, what does this actually mean in terms of being a risk to your health and a mortality risk? Atrial fibrillation in itself is not fatal. It's simply the inefficient and or abnormal beating of the heart. In a normal heart rhythm, the electric signals follow a coordinated pattern, allowing the atria to contract and pump blood into the ventricles, the lower chambers of the heart, which then pump blood to the rest of the body. However, in atrial fibrillation, the electrical signals become chaotic, resulting in a quivering, a quivering or fibrillating motion of the atria instead of a regular contraction. So in and of itself, atrial fibrillation is not immediately dangerous in most instances. It's the conditions that proceed to develop from atrial fibrillation over time that can be extremely dangerous, such as strokes and heart failure. In the media, stroke risk is heavily covered alongside the omega-3 increases risk of atrial fibrillation coverage, stating that you can be five times more susceptible to stroke when you have atrial fibrillation. Again, scary to read on the face of it, but let's dig further. There are ultimately two different forms of stroke. One is an ischemic stroke. Ischemic stroke occurs when a blood clot or blockage obstructs the flow of blood to the brain. And then there's the hemorrhagic stroke, which is caused by bleeding in the brain, often due to a ruptured blood vessel. The stroke that often occurs as a result of atrial fibrillation is most commonly an ischemic stroke. Now, here's where the contradiction occurs regarding, regarding omega-3s and available evidence, because Several studies have suggested that omega-3 fatty acids, particularly the long chain type, so EPA and DHA, found in fish and fish oil, may help to reduce the risk of ischemic stroke. These omega-3 fatty acids have an anti-inflammatory and anti-thrombotic properties, which can help prevent the formation of blood clots and improve blood vessel function. This means that even if we were convinced by the conclusion that omega-3 supplementation increases your risk of atrial fibrillation, the most prominent mortality risk posed by this condition is actually vastly reduced by the supplementation of omega-3s, the things this study states is leading to the condition that precedes this mortality risk. It's almost self-remediating in this respect, even if we were convinced by the highly skewed evidence of the meta-analysis. In summary then, this relatively new study sits in direct contradiction with likely hundreds if not thousands of clinical studies that prove the benefits of omega-3 intake and given what we've explored in this video, should be taken with a generous pinch of salt. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button below this video and don't forget to also hit the bell symbol after you do so you can be notified of any new health and wellness videos that we post. Thanks for watching.